Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. I don't remember when we started, but let us just take one and a half examples more. Now think of a tetrahedron, CH4. I am not going to work out tetrahedron completely for you, that is why I called it one and a half. I will just show you what are the different symmetry elements. I will ask you to figure out how many of them are there, partly. Think of a tetrahedron now. Everybody knows what a tetrahedron is, right? Have you ever seen a tetrahedron? Where? Have you been to birthday parties that they decorate with balloons? Huh? Think of those balloons. When there are four balloons together, those four balloons actually form a tetrahedron, provided they are of the same size. In fact, next time you are invited to a birthday party with balloons, do this experiment. Generally, they like to uh, put four balloons together. Okay, take one of those clusters and burst a balloon. What do you think will happen? Yeah? It will not be a pyramid, that is the point. Yes. You burst another one. What will happen? Yeah, it will be linear. You burst another one, the baby is not going to be happy. Okay. So, what you do instead is that instead of being so destructive, you can also be constructive. Right? Take that uh, set of two balloons that you had, then take another cluster of four balloons and try to tie them together. What do you think will happen? It will become an octahedron in front of your eyes. Burst any of those six balloons, it will become TVP. So that is VSE pair for you. Everybody has studied VSE pair, valential electron pair repulsion theory, that is based on steric considerations. It has got nothing to do with the charge. Steric, you can actually demonstrate VSE pair very nicely using balloons. The only thing that you should take care of is the balloons would better be of uh, the same size. Otherwise, you are going to have all kinds of distortions that our friend likes. Huh. So, let us uh, talk about tetrahedron. What is the angle? 109 degrees. Do you all know how to draw a tetrahedron inside a cube? Yes. How do you draw it? First, you draw a cube, then alternate. Right. I really wish I had another color. Do I? Does anybody have a black pen? Okay, this is one structure that I can draw without goofing up too much. Okay, we define this to be a cube. Where will the points be? If, let's start with this. Not here, not here. Here, here, and here. Right? Those would be the four vertices of a tetrahedron. And if I want to draw the bonds, what will I do? Work out this body diagonal, work out this body diagonal wherever they meet. That is the center. So we will just join these. That is your tetrahedron in a box. Okay. Now let us work out the symmetry operations. What is the uh, CN? What is the, uh, sorry, what is the principal axis of symmetry? C3. 2 is also there, but since C3 is there, C3 is the principal axis of symmetry, right? Where is C3? I think everybody knows along a bond. How many are there? 4. Four symmetry opera operations are four symmetry elements. How many symmetry operations corresponding to C3? C3 
and C3 2, C3 square, whatever you want to call it. Because you can rotate once or you can rotate twice. You can also rotate thrice, but rotating thrice is like C1. So you do not care about that. C3 and C3 square. So for every C3, you have two operations, right? So how many total operations? You have four C3s. Four C3s, right? Each bond is a C3. So eight C3 operations. Okay? Eight C3 operations. Now, is there any other axis of symmetry? You identified C2 already. Where is C2? Right. Let's start with the top side. Take the face center and take the face center of the bottom face and join them. Okay. Don't pay attention to this uh, little bend here. That was not intentional. Huh? Where is C2? A, B. Let us name these A, B, C, and D. If I apply a C2 rotation along this axis, then what will happen? A and B interchange, C and D interchange. Are we okay with that? Do you understand? A and B interchange, B and C interchange, uh, sorry, A and B interchange, C and D interchange. Is there any other C2? Yes, now it is very easy to figure out. Because now you understood that to get a C2, you have to join the face centers of opposite faces. How many sets of opposite faces are there? Three. So they are going to be three C2 axes. And they are going to be perpendicular to each other. Right? One will be like this, one like this, third like this. So X, Y, Z, Cartesian axis. Isn't it? The three C2s form the three Cartesian axis. So how many C2s are there? Three symmetry elements or three symmetry operations? As well as operations. Because C2 square once again is E, identity, not doing anything, C1. Okay? So 3. Okay. C3 is done, C2 is done. Anything else? Of course, you cannot look for lower 1 because less than 2 is 1. That is always there. Infinite number of C1 axes. But that is uh, trivial. Is there any C4? S4 is there, right? C2 also works as S4. How many S4 operations per axis? Now, that is, a, that is something that you should work out carefully and tell me next day. Fine. Now, let us look for planes. Is inversion symmetry there? Tetrahedron inversion symmetry, is it there? Not there. Not there, right? Cannot be. Okay. What about planes? Do you see the planes? Where? And another line like this. This is a plane. Right? And similarly, this is another plane. Got it? Right? Now see, how many uh, such are there is very easy. These two planes have a C2 axis at the intersection. And you told me there are three C2 axis. So obviously, there have to be three sets of planes, three into two, six planes. Okay. Now, look from the top. Okay. If you look from the top, how will it look? This here is a plane. This here is another plane. Sorry. And where are the C2 axis? One C2 axis is like this, perpendicular. The other two, one is like this, another one is like this, isn't it? Through the center, of course, not at the top. Right? So, see, these planes, do not they bisect the angle between C2 axis? So, these are dihedral planes, 6 dihedral planes. Okay. So, I work out whatever is there and tell me what are the uh, symmetry operations present in TD. You will get a big list and then that is called TD tetrahedral. Okay. I want to finish today's discussion with my favorite molecule and that is aline. 
Remember the structure of allene? What is the structure of allene? I keep forgetting which one is zoom and which one is written here. I just write the simple chemical structure first CH2 double bond C double bond CH2. This is allene, okay. Those who did not know or forgot, know now. Now, see what is the hybridization of the central carbon? SP, right. So, you have one pi orbital like this, another pi orbital set like this, okay. So, if you look at the structure, this is what the structure is. Let us say these two hydrogen atoms are in the plane, then these two hydrogen atoms will be above and below the plane, okay. Right. Now, let me quickly draw another tetrahedron. That is how a tetrahedron looks. So, what does allene look like? It looks like you have taken a tetrahedron and you have kind of dragged it, is not it? You have uh, dragged it out. So, from one carbon, somehow you have made two carbons and you have made it long. So, I think you understand that this symmetry of allene will be related to symmetry of tetrahedron theory. It is just that many of the symmetry operations will now be gone because what you have essentially done is you have induced a distortion. You start with the much more symmetric structure uh, TD, you have brought in a distortion along an axis. So, many of the symmetry operations will be gone. Let us see what are the symmetry operations that will survive. I think what is easiest to see are the planes. Do you see the planes? This HCH will define a plane, is not it? HCH will define a plane. So, this is one plane perpendicular to the paper and this here is another plane in the plane of the paper, okay with that? Is there any other plane? How many planes were there in the tetrahedron? 6, here we have only 2. Okay. Now, let us look for the C2 axis. Okay. Will C4 be there? Of course, C4 will not be there. You have distorted. C4 is gone. Your only hope is C2. How many C2s have survived out of 3? And these two planes have survived. Okay. How many C2s have survived? Can you tell me that? I, I can see one very easily. Is there any other? Is there any other? To figure out if there is any other, let us look at the molecule from say this side. If you look at the molecule from this side, what will you see? You have this hydrogen here. Now, have I drawn it? Oh, sorry. This hydrogen, this hydrogen, and if you look from this side, as the hydrogens are horizontal, uh, the earlier, earlier one was better. I do not know why I chose to do this. Looking from this side, so this hydrogen here, this hydrogen here, and then both the hydrogens will point away from you, right. These two, one the point away from you, huh? Now, is there any? Is there any C two? Actually, you know, this is a C two. This is a C two. All the three C two survive. It is just that one looks different from the others. Okay. Let us close as this point today. Next day what we will do is we will start with this, but we will look at a three dimensional model 
and then you will understand very easily where the C2 is there. The other thing that we will do is, in fact, you can try to do it at home. You have drawn tetrahedron uh, inside a box, inside a cubic box. Can you try to draw this thing, aline, inside another box? It will just that it will not be a cubic box anymore, right? It is going to be a cuboidal box. Try to draw this inside a cuboidal box, you will see the C2s right away. And next day, we are going to show you the model anyway. And then I will ask you another question. I am not going to go well in so easily. Next question is, now I substitute this hydrogen with a chlorine. I substitute this hydrogen with chlorine. Does that make it a C1 molecule? I see some nodes, it does not. A C2 axis survives. One single C2 axis will survive even in that. And I think we will understand it better when we see the model. That is what we do the next day.